This is Baby Blush, a free to play account where we spent the past 4 months trying to beat the game by making it into Division 1, but unfortunately always fall short due to not being able to build a good enough team to do so. I then went on a 3 week endeavor where I invested all of my resources into acquiring the most overpowered player within the game, and in today's video, decided to give myself another 2 weeks to build the best team that I possibly could around them in a final effort to beat the game and finally make it into Division 1. So when I started, I saw that the season resetted in just under 4 days. This meant that I needed to make it into Division 1 before these 4 days ended because failing to do so would cause me to get deranked once the season reset. Now because the team of the year attackers were in packs at the time, I would claim a pack that I had in the objectives and I would also craft an 85 plus player pick and a team of the week player pick because this could help us to complete upgraded SPCs and after getting an awful team of the week from the team of the week player pick, we had an opportunity at getting a team of the year from the 85 plus player pick that we had. Come on this is a massive player pick? No way we only get an 86. I would then open a couple of the packs that I had but after seeing that they were awful, I decided that moving forward until the full team of the year was in packs, I was going to save all of the packs that I had, but I would open a pack that costed me 30 coins. Did we get a team of the year? No, we're not going to be getting a team of the year. But did we just get Oblak? We did, and he's 88 rated. And it's also going to be extremely important for this video. Anyway, after opening that pack, because we had just under 4 days to make it into Division 1, and we had just acquired the most overpowered player within the game, I decided to enter into Division Rivals, and this is how our very first game would go. We have Zola 3 here, this guy's dribbling is absolutely insane. And what a finish! Now, after taking a lead, unfortunately, we would give away a penalty, and this high up in the divisions, we couldn't afford to concede like this. We would then work our way back into a one goal lead, but our opponents would then continue running through the middle of the park, giving them good opportunities, and in this moment, this was starting to frustrate me. Oh no, he's straight down the middle once again. We have to be able to catch up with him here? No way! And after conceding that goal, our midfield would continue to get exploited, and out of nowhere, we were down by two goals. And as soon as I started to lose hope in being able to beat the game, I was given a little bit of hope. Mbappe? Okay, that's one back. And the reason I spent three weeks working for this player was because worth Mbappe? Okay, we actually have a chance with him. And once the game was equalized, with the help of the attackers that we were lucky to acquire during our journey in completing Mbappe's player of the month, we were capable of building a three goal lead against this opponent. Now, unfortunately, we weren't capable of acquiring upgrades in the defense, and because of this, our opponent would score two goals back, and when all was said and done, we would end up winning this game by one goal. I would then win the next game that I played as well, and with the confidence that I now had, and the fact that I had more hope, as a result of having Mbappe in my team, I was also capable of winning the third game that I played in a row, and at this point, because of our win streak, if we could win the next game that we played, we would earn promotion into Division 2. Okay, win this game, and we won Division away. And early on into this important game, we would earn ourselves a free kick. Okay, Zola with the dead ball trait. Can he score this free kick? No, we get blocked. Captavia? No. But with the way that we were playing, our opponent couldn't hold us out for much longer. Zola now, he is so clinical. And even though this game was tough, I would continue to ground out opportunities, and I knew that eventually one of these had to go in. Ramirez straight into the young, who finds Zola with the finesse. Yes, we have a two goal lead. And like I said, this opponent was tough, but even though I wasn't capable of scoring throughout the rest of this game, I would still end up winning it, and this meant that, yes, we've just made it into Division 2, and this is the highest I've ever been. I would then claim a load of the objectives that we had completed, and I would open the player picks that I had earned as well. But eager to make it into division 1, I would play my first game in division 2, but this is when my worst fear became true, because now, facing tougher teams, I was having a much more difficult time defending, and even though I was capable of scoring, it would take a lot out of me in order to do so, but because of the cracks that existed within our team, and the quality of players that we were facing at this level, our opponents were capable of applying a lot of pressure onto us, and eventually, we would be broken down. Now even though we would still end up winning this game, because of the way that it went, I wasn't confident in my ability to progress further, and once again, I started to have that familiar feeling of failure, because I doubted my ability to be able to actually make it into Division 1 after failing to do so since the game was released over 4 months ago. Now it was only normal for me to experience the emotion that I did on the first day of this challenge, especially when you consider the way that things were going, but the reality of the situation was that we had 2 weeks to complete this challenge, and so even if I didn't make it into Division 1 in the first 4 days, although we would end up getting pushed back in the divisions, we would still have a decent amount of time to try to beat the game. Now after realizing this, I decided that I was going to spend the next 2 weeks upgrading the team around Mbappe as much as as I possibly could, because while I did believe that he would be the key to getting me into Division 1, I knew that it was important to have good players around him, and I decided that there were 4 positions that I wanted to upgrade, of which the first one would be in the attack, even though it wasn't the most necessary, because we had already made progress towards competing Zico's SPC in the last video. Ok, so the highest squad that we can build is only 85, and Zico's highest rated squad is 89 rated, and that's why packing our black was so important. After playing those games, we have earned ourselves an 81x11, so that's another pack that I'll be saving for this Friday. 
Top from day 2, my plan for the rest of the week was clear. Because after seeing the impact that Zola had in our team, knowing that we only obtained him because of the fact that we saved packs for the team of the year promo, I decided that until Friday, I was going to spend every single day collecting as many packs as I could. Now on this day, the daily objectives had refreshed, and also saw that by completing the daily play objectives as well, we could get a decent amount of XP, and by getting XP, I could progress further in the season pass, where we could collect some really good packs. Now initially, I thought of playing my games in the Division Rivals game mode, but I'll be honest with you, at this point, I have developed PTSD for that game mode, and so I decided to play my three games in the qualifiers. Now in these games, playing with Mbappe was putting a smile on my face and he was just clearly a tier above any other player within the game. Now after we won the first three games in the qualifiers, with Mbappe literally being the only player to score goals in these games, I was capable of claiming some XP, daily play objective rewards as well as daily play completionist objective rewards and while claiming these rewards, I saw that there was a draft objective available and we could get some decent packs for playing there. On top of this, we also picked up a draft token pack and also saw that the XP that we got allowed us to add an 84 times 10 pack to our our collection before using some of the players that we had to craft an 85 plus player pick as well as a draft token upgrade that was available on this day because it would allow us to progress further in the draft objective and I also set myself a rule which was that okay so until the full team of the year comes out we are allowed to open player picks but hopefully it won't all be as bad as this one but we have to save all the good packs that we get wow these player picks are really bad right now final player pick is an 85 plus one okay and we do get an 88 rated card which is decent i would then redeem our draft token before building the best draft team that you've ever seen and then absolutely destroying the first opponent to I came up against, although I would end up losing in the second round. However, I would then instantly redeem another draft token before playing and winning my last draft game on this day. I would then start the next day off by completing the daily login SPC as well as the draft token SPC that refreshed on this day. And completing the daily login for today allowed me to get a decent pack from the objectives. Now I could also claim all of the objectives that I had completed in the draft game mode the day before, before continuing to play in the draft game mode and unfortunately losing in the second game that I played on this day. Now after doing so, because we were making progress in the objectives, I would once again build another draft team and this time, with arguably the worst team that I built over these days, I would actually end up winning the entire draft. Now the rewards that we got for doing so were awful. And because of this, I would open these packs, and to nobody's surprise at all, these packs would end up being as awful as the rewards were. Now what wasn't awful was that on this day, after completing the daily play objectives, I saw that we actually completed the entire daily play completionist objectives as well. And on top of this, from the progress that we made in the draft objective, we were capable of claiming some insane packs. We were now also a lot closer to completing the entire draft objective, but because we had player picks, we have a chance of getting team of the years, but the first player picks are going to be awful. Now to avoid wasting your time, we wouldn't get a team of the year in the next two player picks either, but because we had a 30 coin pack in the store, I would open this pack, but unfortunately, the bad luck for this day seemed to continue. However, we did now at least have 23 packs saved. Now on day 4, with the daily objectives refreshing and us only needing one more daily completion to complete the weekly objectives, I knew that I needed to play some games. Now I thought of doing it in Division Rivals, but because at this point I just absolutely hated this game mode and we did have our wins that we needed to get rewards on Thursday, I decided to once again play 3 more games in the qualifiers. Now once again, during these games Mbappe was absolutely insane, but I would also continue to see the importance of having Zola in our team, and after winning the first 3 games that I played in a row, I was capable of claiming tons of XP, leveling up in the season pass, getting a crap Tifo, but also now only being 450 XP away from level 30. I would then open the 30 coin pack and on this day it was massive because we'd get ourselves an 87 rated walkout and as we know later on in this challenge these high rated players are going to be of utmost importance but for now with no more objectives to complete to allow me to get some more packs I had to think of another way. Okay so the highest rated squad that we can build is now 86 but today to get more packs I'm going to use the resources that we already have in our club. This meant completing team of the week player picks because these team of the week player picks would allow me to complete upgrade packs and because we had a decent amount of players in our club, I would complete another 85 plus player pick for this day and doing so was allowing me to convert mid tier rated players into higher rated players. Now after crafting my second team of the week player pick, I will complete an 85 times 3 midfielders pack as well as an 83 times 10 and at this point boy was I like getting excited for Friday but after using my mid tier rated fodder, I decided to use the lower rated gold cards that I had to complete the market matchups SPC allowing me to add some decent tradable packs to our collection and after completing the entire market matchups because we still had some low rated gold cards, I would use all of these cards to complete the winter wildcards crafting upgrade as many times as i possibly could and i would also end up opening these packs with the hopes of getting mid tier rated players because as we've just seen getting those players was allowing us to craft some potent upgrade packs 
Now day 5 was massive, because after completing the daily login SPC, I saw that EA had released a 93 rated team of the year icon Sawa SPC. That was me wanting to upgrade a midfield position, because of the fact that Ramirez's positions made getting chemistry a lot tougher, she was the perfect player to replace him. Now after seeing her, I would rush and complete the draft token upgrade, because at this point we weren't far from completing the entire draft objective, but before going into our game, I would open a 30 coin pack, and on this day, once again we would get another workout, but after building another draft, and then playing and winning the first game that I had, if I could win my next game i would complete the entire draft objective and so in this game it was important that we had a good start smirth into mia ham if only we can pack this card the rest of the first half would be a stalemate but early on into the second half mia finds alexia we're through and we have a two goal lead now after this a little bit of magic from mia ham would allow us to extend our lead to three and this would force our opponent to rage quit but also give me the confidence to win this entire draft as well come on Okay, we do get a 50k pack. Now, because the gold pack was trash, I would open it and get trash players from it. But playing those draft games would allow us to complete the daily play objectives for this day. But most importantly, we just added some insane packs to our collection from the draft objective. I would then close this day off by getting some trash players from our player picks. But this day was massive because from having 23 good packs in our store on the day prior, on this day, we ended with 35 good packs in our store. Now day 6 in this challenge was an important one, because with it being Thursday, I was capable of claiming a decent amount of good packs from our Division 2 rival rewards. Now with the new season beginning, we were pushed back a division, but because I only wanted decent packs in our store, I would open the two 2 day gold player packs that we got from our Division rival rewards, and after not getting anything crazy from them, I would open the 30 coin pack that we had in the store, but on this day, this pack wouldn't be too good either. I then saw that the XP that we got from our rewards allowed us to get a bit of a head start in the new season pass, and I also saw that there were some insane rewards in the season pass, motivating me to get a lot of xp throughout the week and so after claiming a decent pack from the daily login spc objective i saw that by playing games i could get the xp that i wanted and because i qualify a run at reset with the inclusion of a new season pass i decided that i'd play these games here because we could also earn some decent tradable rewards to add to our collection now my first game on this day would start off in a bad manner however even though i conceded a couple of goals i was still capable of making the comeback and ultimately we would end up winning this game i then had a look at a player who i was interested in purchasing as a temporary replacement for ramirez who i just couldn't get chemistry on because so was going to take a minute to complete as i did still want to complete zico before her but because i felt like pastry's price just wasn't right i would continue playing in the qualifiers and for now it seemed like our team was okay for this game mode i could then claim some xp from the daily objective before using the team of the weeks that we had in our club to complete an 83 times 10 as well as an 84 times 5 pack buffing our collection even further but because of the fact that this was the last day before the team of the year promo came out i was motivated to get the rewards from the qualifiers as well and i would continue playing in that game mode now, after winning a few i saw that i'd made it to level one in the season pass my book's content had refreshed, I would complete the daily login SPC before opening a 30 coin pack, allowing me to get another 84 rated player, and then completing the 83 times 5 defenders upgrade that was released on this day. So we now have 47 packs in our store, but I want even more. And with 5 games left in the qualifiers, and a team of the year champions bonus objective, we could get even more packs, and so I would proceed to play my qualifiers games, and after winning a few more, I saw that by the time I had 1 game left, I was guaranteed rank 3 rewards, but if I could win that last game, I could upgrade the rewards to rank 2. And so, I really want to win this game. Now, as badly as I wanted to win this game, for the first hour within it, I wasn't capable of scoring a single goal, but we completed this player for games like these. Solo into Mbappe straight away, can he get through? Yes, Mbappe is through with the speed, can we score? Yes, what a finish! And our opponent rage quit. This meant that we did in fact upgrade our rewards to rank 2, meaning that we could add 4 decent tradable packs to our collection. We could also claim another pack from the team of the year champions bonus objective, and this means that we ended this day with 52 good packs in our store. So the full team of the year comes out in about 4 hours, for the team of the year champions objective available, and the bonus objective available as well, we can play in the champions finals game mode to add a few more insane packs to our collection before the full team of the year comes out. Now we're playing in the champions finals game mode, we could also work towards getting some insane rewards once we completed it, and because I'd also be getting XP from the daily objectives, I decided to enter into the champions finals, but it was already in my first game when I noticed a massive problem moving forward. Wow, this guy's getting through our team so easily, what is happening? We're goal down in our first game. This meant that we had to fight hard to come back, and it was the better players that we had that was having to carry the rest of the players on our team and we would end up winning this first game but again in the next two games that i played simply being able to score goals was proving to not be enough anymore because we were just conceding way too many now earlier on i highlighted the four upgrades that i wanted to upgrade and it was in these first three champions finals games when i realized that if i wanted to play at the highest level which i needed to do to make it into division one i was going to need these upgrades and so because getting more packs was one of the ways that we could get some more upgrades i would continue to play two more games in the champions finals and although we would have to try extremely hard to win fortunately we we were capable of winning these two games, and so after claiming some of the objectives that we had completed in those games, allowing us to get a potent pack to win the full team of the A's in packs, I understood that I was going to need to upgrade those four positions if I wanted to have more success at the highest 
level. But because for now we were still working on Zico, meaning that we couldn't complete Kafu, Alfonso Davies, or Sawa's team of the year icon is PC, I decided that I'd purchase some temporary upgrades with the coins that I had. So we're going to need to buy some upgrades for now. And the first play I'm going to purchase is Theo for the left back position, setting us back 130,000 coins. I would then purchase Cancelo's UCL card for 280,000 coins. And this worked out perfectly because with the coins that we had left, we could purchase Pottery Center mid card. And so after adding these three players into our team, I expected to have a little bit more success, but I still knew that I was going to need those high tier players if I wanted to make it into Division 1. And with the insane packs that we had in our store, we could pack some insane upgrades for our team, but even just high rated players would do the trick because we could use them to complete SPCs, of which our highest rated squad that we could build was now 87. Okay, so the full team of the year is now out, and there are some absolutely insane cards in packs. Now before opening any packs, I would complete the daily login SPC, and doing so would allow me to earn a decent pack from the daily login SPC objective, and so this meant that we now had 55 opportunities at packing a team of the year player. Okay, let's start with the worst packs first, and this is why we only got an 80 rated player. Second pack, no team of the year again, and hopefully all our packs are not this bad. Unfortunately, the next few packs that I opened would continue to be as bad as the first two, but eventually in the 12th pack that I opened, we got a team of the week. Now unfortunately, this player was a duplicate, and so to continue opening our packs, I would use him to complete the 85 rated squad for an 82 times 20 pack. Before proceeding to open our packs, we in our fifth one, we would pack our first walkout, and it looked like our backlog was starting to pick up, because the average rating of the players that we were packing now had definitely increased, and we also started to pack some more walkouts. We're halfway through our packs now, but we only have insane packs left. Come on, no team of the year, and this one's going to be Odegaard, and so at least we're starting to get walkouts. I would then sell the valuable players in this pack, and the next pack that we opened was tradable too, but unfortunately, we didn't make as many coins from that one, and then I would proceed to open six more packs, where once again, the players that we were getting on average were higher rated, but this could have just been down to the fact that we were opening our lesser packs first, and so as we continued to open packs, it was just natural that the players that we'd pack would be more rare, but after getting some duplicates with decent rating, okay, I'm using some of our players to complete an 82 times 20 pack, so we've just increased our chances of packing a team of the year. Now throughout the next five packs that I opened, we would continue the trend of packing better players, and by the time we had 16 packs left, we had packed another inform, as well as another walkout. I would then have a look at the quality of the 16 packs that were left and i'll be honest with you not packing a team of the year from any of these would be a robbery okay 81 times 11 now there's no team of the year but we do have some juicy packs left and this one's going to be bronze okay but it's two workouts and we just got 287 rated and so while we didn't pack a team of the year this was still important because it could help us to complete zico now talking of completing player species because Modric was a duplicate i decided to use him to complete one of kafu's squads because the right back position was one of the positions that i wanted to upgrade now, although my next two packs were insane the best player that we got from each of them was only 84 rated and at this point i couldn't understand what was going on they killed the odds for team of the years i'm telling you oh i think we just got a team of the year it's an english right back no it's not going to be a team of the year but it is going to be trent and he plays for my favorite team on top of this his card was absolutely insane and because he could play in the sentiment position i decided that i was going to use him there and we could sell pottery but because i expected a price to increase i wouldn't actually list her and i would continue to open the packs that we had left come on no we're still here to pack an actual team of the year in the session and this pack's only going to be an 85. My next pack would give me an 86 rated player, but the player that I got in the pack after this would only be 84 rated. And at this point, with 9 packs in the store, our worst one was an 82 times 20. Spanish goalkeeper from Barca. We're only getting one walkout, and it's only an 87 rated player. That was the team of the week, and loads of fairly high rated duplicates in this pack. The most sensible thing for me to do was to add another upgrade pack to our collection. Okay, I just crafted this pack, and once again, no team of the year, but it's going to be a Spanish center back from Barca, and we'll take an 88 rated player. And in our next pack, we would continue to get players from Barcelona and we would also pack two walkouts. 83 times 10 now. Oh, I think we got something. Okay, it looks like it's going to be a team of the week and it's an Argentina center forward. Oh, it's Dybala, but it's two walkouts. And our team of the week is Ferran Torres. And we are getting some more fodder. Another 83 times 10. And it's going to give us an 87 rated. Oh, and we also got an 85 rated team of the week. Now with five packs left, the next one would be massive because although we only packed one walkout, it was a 90 rated Karim Benzema. But once again, with fairly high rated duplicates, I would use him to make more progress towards completing Kafu. Before opening 3 more packs, where even though we did get walkouts in 2 of them, I still felt like these packs overall were a bit underwhelming. We have one more opportunity at getting a team of the year. No, and we're not going to be getting a team of the year. It's an English left wing from City. So it's going to be him. Wait, no, it's not even a walkout. And after opening all of our packs, I was capable of completing another Kafu squad. And so our 55 packs would only allow us to get one upgrade for our team. Now, after not packing a team of the year, I was still hungry for more packs. And the fact that there were loads of gameplay objectives that would reward us with some insane packs if we played in the Champions game mode. I knew that I had to continue playing there. Now in the first game that I played, I didn't feel like Trent was bad necessarily, but I was struggling with him in the midfield and I would end up losing this game. I would then proceed to win the second game that I played, but once again, in the third game that I played, I would end up struggling quite a bit, and it just felt like my team was all over the place. Unfortunately, with the 
top of the place that we had in the attack, we were still capable of winning it. I could then claim all of the daily player objective rewards, as well as packs from the daily pay completionist, as well as a team of the year champions bonus objective. But unfortunately, after opening all of these picks and packs, a search for a team of the year was still on because we wouldn't end up packing any. Oh yeah, and at the end of this day, Patrick's price was 435,000 coins. On the start of day 8, I saw that Patrick's price had dropped to 422,000 coins. But what was weird is that other than these two listings, until all the way up to 480,000 coins, there were literally no more listings. So on this day, I saw this as an opportunity, and so I would list our Patrick for 475,000 coins before having a look at our objective progress and then entering into the champions finals with my goal be to complete the objectives that were available. And my first game would start off in the worst way possible, and just like the day prior, I just felt like our team was all over the place and it had no structure. Because of this, I would end up losing this game, but with my record being absolutely awful at this point, I knew that we needed change. Because of this, I would change from our current formation into a new formation that could defend the wings a lot better because our attackers could help us on the defense. Now after making these changes, in the next few games, I started to feel like I was Pep Guardiola because my tactical changes would allow me to win my next three games in the champions finals, but after winning these three games, I started to feel like the wolf of Wall Street because Patri ended up selling and we made a decent amount of profit on her. Now in high spirits, I would claim all of the objectives that we had completed during those games before opening our packs where the second pack would give us two walkouts and this meant that we weren't far from completing Zico's most expensive squad. Now my goal was to complete his entire card by the end of our champions finals because there were still other upgrades that we needed to make to our team and so because of this I knew that we'd most likely need to spend coins and because of that I would complete the entire market matchups SPC because the packs that we'd get back from it were tradable however unfortunately from the packs that we got back we wouldn't end up making that many coins. Now the next best way of getting loads of coins as well as high listed players that could help us get the upgrades that we wanted for our team was to continue playing in the champions finals and also to continue completing the objectives and at this point I saw that if we could win five more games within the champions game mode we could get a couple of significant packs. Now my first game back would be against a tough opponent and against opponents like this you can't afford to have any flaws in your team. Now in this game I would notice that we had a massive flaw and it was the fact that Trent just didn't feel like he fit the midfield position and so after losing this game I knew that we needed to make another change. Okay so Trent just isn't working well in the midfield so I'm going to move him to the right back position and then I'm also going to sell Cancelo. Now I did this because overall I felt like Ramirez was the best player that we owned for this position and by selling Cancelo we could get a lot of coins back that would help us to get closer to getting our upgrades. I then decided to finish the 7 games that I had left in the champions finals and it seemed like moving Trent to the right back position was definitely the right decision because in the next 3 games that we played we would only end up losing 1. Now because we lost the best rewards that we could get was rank 4 but that was only if we won the last 4 games that we had and because we ended up losing the very next game that we played it was no longer possible for us to get these rewards. Now this loss didn't bother me too much because with the 3 games that we had left we still had the opportunity of getting the insane objective packs but that was only if we won all 3 of these games in a row and with the quality of teams we were facing this was not going to be easy. Zola now, good dribbling, can we find a pass? We find George Best, does he score? Yes he does! And because we now had Trent in the defense, our defense was actually a lot more compact and this meant that when our attackers did their job, it was a lot more meaningful. Zola now, this is good, into Coleman first time? I can't believe he's actually scored that. Trent would then continue to prove that he was actually a competent right back and like I said, this meant that what our attackers did was now a lot more meaningful and so after winning this game and then winning the very next game that we played as well, I decided to make a massive decision which was that I no longer wanted to get Kafu because I felt like Trent at the right back position was good enough to help us get into division 1 and because we were already over a week into this challenge and we still didn't even complete one of the upgrades that we wanted to get initially we'd most likely have to make do with Trent because we probably wouldn't have the privilege of unlocking a player like Kafu. Okay we have one game left and we have completed this objective which is going to give us an 81 times 11 but most importantly if we can win this last game we'll get an 84 times 4 pack as well as an 83 times 10 as the group reward and so it was important that we started off in a strong manner. Trent finds Mbappe who finds George Best can we dribble through here? We do. We shoot. And best scores. But a one goal lead is never a comfortable lead. Come on now, let's stay composed. Oh, we just cooked him there. And in these big games, it was nice to have somebody who I could rely on. Mbappe is through now. Can he score from here? He's insane. My opponent would end up rage quitting, meaning that I would end up winning this game. And that we also had some insane Champions Finals rewards to claim. Now from my player picks, I was hoping for high rated players, but the first two were absolutely awful. However, I was satisfied when I ended up getting an 87 rated team of the week from the third one before claiming a pack that we got from the season pass. But then most importantly, the packs that we got for completing the entire team of the year champions objective. Okay, let's start with the tradable packs first. And the goal here is to make coins, so this is an awful pack. 85 times 2 now, no team of the year, but we do get a walkout, and so we can make some coins from 
from this. The next pack was a pack that guaranteed us a promo card. And the pack after that was our final tradable pack. We wouldn't get anything special. But because of the fact that we had a team of the week, we were capable of making a decent amount of coins. I would then start with the tradable packs. Well, although the first one wasn't good, the second one would give us two walkouts. And then the third pack that I had, once again, we got two walkouts and the first one was 87 rated. And our second one's going to be another 87 rated player. That was one of these players being a duplicate. And us not being close to completing Zico's 89 rated squad, I decided that I'd use this duplicate along with other high rated players that we had packed to complete an 87 rated squad for Zico. Okay, this is our last pack. And it's going to be a Norwegian left wing from Chelsea. It's an 88 rated, but it's only one walkout. And once all of our players had sold, we had almost 1 million coins. I was loads of duplicates. And the fact that there was a player pick SPC, I would craft a ton of player picks, which would end up giving me a ton of crap. Before seeing that the only game mode where I could get some objective packs was the division rivals game mode. Now, I didn't want to play there. And because content had refreshed, I would complete the daily login SPC. And this allowed me to get a decent pack from the objectives. Okay, we have an 82 times 20. Oh, I think we're getting a special card. And it's going to be a team of the week. And that's an 87 rated in form. Who, unfortunately, was a duplicate. That would allow me to complete another 82 times 20 pack. Come on, no team of the year, unfortunately. But it's going to be a German center mid from Madrid. No way, it's just going to be an 86 and it's only one walkout. On this day, I would start off by completing the daily login SPC, which would allow me to get a decent pack from the objective. And from this pack, I would end up getting an 88 rated player. And because of all of the high rated players that I had gotten so far, I thought that I could complete Zico's most expensive squad. Now, we couldn't. Unless I spent 130,000 coins to purchase two 90 rated players. And with us still needing to complete Sawa's SPC later on in this challenge, I knew that I needed to use my coins sparingly. Unfortunately for me, I could get resources by playing in the team of the air cup. And so I decided to start to use the five games that I had on this day. Now, although the games were based on your ranking division rivals, surprisingly, I was still capable of performing well. And by the time that I'd exhausted my five games, I had won four of them. This allowed me to claim some objectives, and I could also claim the daily play objectives as well. But unfortunately, the packs that we got wouldn't give us anything good, or at least that's what I thought until I opened the very last pack that I had. No special card. These packs have been so awful, but this could be an 87 rated card. It is an 87, but it's going to be two walkouts. No way, we just got Casemiro as well. And this was massive because now, all of a sudden, we only had to spend 100,000 coins to complete Zico's most expensive squad. Now with Division Rival Rewards coming out soon, I wanted to get the wins that I needed, and so I started to play these games with the intention of finding out how far I could make it, and initially, things were going incredibly well, because in my second game, I would beat my opponent by 10 goals. After winning a couple of games, I would start to claim the objectives that we had completed, and this would allow us to get some more players, but because content had refreshed, I would complete the daily login as well, allowing me to complete the entire objective, giving me a good chance at getting a team of the year, and so after opening the first two packs that I had in the store, and in the second pack, once again getting two walkouts, with our second walkout once again being being an 89 rated Casemiro because it was a duplicate, I knew that I had to make a commitment. Okay, so I'm going to purchase Lewandowski as well as Kimmich. And so for just under 90,000 coins, Zico's most expensive squad is now complete. And on this day, things just seem to be going my way. We got a French hero? Okay, that could have been Janola, but I'll take a tradable hero any day. And with the pack as big as the next one that I opened, I would be satisfied with the team of the year. No, we're not getting a team of the year from this pack. French left mid from Bayern. No, there's no way. Yeah. And 85 rated card was the highest rated card that I packed in an 83 times 20 pack. So I decided to end the day there. On this day, my goal was to get the best possible rival rewards and make it as far as I could in the divisions. Even though we completed the daily login objective, it was still worth it for me to complete the daily login SPC. And so after opening the pack that I got and getting absolute trash, I would open the tradable preview pack and a once in a blue moon event would occur because I actually ended up making profit. Now the next preview pack was awful, but we don't talk about that. And another thing that I didn't want to have to talk about was the fact that on this day, I would lose the first game that I played in division rivals. And with the nature of our goal, this would frustrate me because I truly felt like I was starting to make good progress but because i knew how important the division rival rewards were and the fact that there wasn't that much time before the rewards were actually released i would spend as much time as i needed to on this day to get the wins that i needed to within division rivals and i must say as always mbappe was just a massive help to have in our team unfortunately eventually we managed to actually get the wins that we needed now we did also make some good progress in division 3 but with the nature of how tough some of those games were i wasn't ready to push further and the team of the year cup was another game that i could invest time in we had get a better return now before doing that i saw that the xp that we had got for complete objectives during those games allowed us to level up in the season pass and after claiming a decent pack and then another pack from the daily play competitionist objective i would claim a rivals as well as another daily play objective group reward and then massive division rivals grind was paying off because we had stacked up a bunch of packs now first player pick i'll be happy with an 85 oh we actually get an 87 now our second player pick was nowhere near as good as the first and then i would start opening the objective packs that we had earned now from these packs we were getting some mid-tier rated players but the most notable player that we packed was an 87 rated team of the week but unfortunately the highest rated squad that we could 
football was only 86 and we still had four fairly high rated squads to complete for Zico. Now, like I said, I still wanted to complete Sauer and at the left back position, I wanted to complete Alfonso Davies as well because I knew that by upgrading these positions, I would have a team that would truly have the potential to make it into Division 1. After seeing this, the mid rated players that we packed would show the importance because using them, I was capable of completing an 82 times 20 pack. This is a significant upgrade pack. Come on. No, no team of the year again. And it's an English center back. No way. And once again, from an insane pack, we would only get an 85. Okay, so we actually have loads of low-rated gold cards, and we can use these to complete upgrade packs. As you can see, I was clearly scrambling, and at this point, I was doing literally everything that I could to get my hands on some higher-rated players. Now, after completing as many upgrade packs as I possibly could, through the team of the year crafting upgrade objective, I was capable of getting two decent player picks. However, unfortunately, considering the type of player picks these were, the players that we got from them would be underwhelming. I was still at our 18 upgrade packs, and after getting an 87-rated card in only the second pack that I opened, my hopes for these packs were high. Now, unfortunately, after this, these packs would very quickly destroy my hopes at getting anything good because I was opening pack after pack, getting low rated card after low rated card. Throughout the final 16 packs that I opened, I would only get one more walkout in Pedri. Okay, our rival rewards are ready to claim, and these are going to be massive, because along with some decent packs, we're getting a good amount of XP. And while that XP did allow us to level up in the season pass, it didn't allow us to get anything good. And then from our rival rewards, this trend of not getting anything good would continue, because the highest rated players that we got were 285s, however one of them was at least a team of the week. Now after forgetting to play my games the day prior, I saw that I still had 3 days to complete the team of the air cup, and while we were finding tougher teams because we were higher up in division rivals, fortunately, we were still competent within these games, because it seemed like now, we did have a team that was decent all around and this was proven by the fact that once again out of the five games that we played on this day we would end up winning four of them now, after the session i would see that i'd earned a ton of xp completed a few objectives and leveled up in the season pass where i could now claim a decent pack and equally as importantly we had made a lot more progress in the cup objective and so along with some players with decent rating we also earned ourselves two good packs now with the team of the year promo ending soon these packs were a final opportunity at actually pulling one of those cards but after the first two packs weren't the greatest we were down to realistically our final opportunity no we still don't get it team of the year but it's a polish striker p lewandowski no at least it's an 87 and at least our ground was paying off because now the highest rated squad that we could build was 87 so we have a good amount of team of the weeks and i'm gonna use the lower rated one to complete an upgrade pack for this day give me a team of the year no once again it's not going to be a team of the year but it's a german center mid from real madrid okay it's an 86 but it needs two walkouts and we just packed two of the greatest midfielders of all time now to multiply on this good progress i saw that the team of the year daily play objective ended soon but if i completed it i could get a good pack from the team of the year daily completionist objective and because content are refreshed i could try to win the final two games that i needed to win the cup now, on the previous days i had won four out of the five games that i had and so it wasn't too tough for me to win two games and after earning 500 xp i was capable of claiming an 84 times 5 from the season pass as well as all of the rewards for completing the entire team of the year cup now i still needed to play one more game for the daily play objective but i would first open the packs that i had earned we already in our second pack we would get an 86 but unfortunately in the 84 times 5 pack a highest rated card would be an 85 and because they were a team of the week duplicates i would use them to complete an 84 times 11 upgrade pack and from this pack i expected to finally get something good come on we're going to be getting spanish into mid from Barca, is that alexia no it's pedri but it's going to be two walkouts no is that pareo Oh hell nah. Now behind them we did have another walkout, but we also had tons of duplicates in this pack. But these material rated cards were important, and using these ones, I was capable of completing an 82 times 20 upgrade pack, and hopefully this one would give me something better than an 85. Come on. Okay, Dutch, center mid. From Barca, that's definitely an 87. Oh, and it's two walkouts, which means the next player is even higher rated. Okay, the next player is the same rating. We got two 87s from that pack. And in excitement, I checked to see what the highest rated squad that we could build was, and it was still only 87. Now this was bad, because 10 days into this challenge, we were still working on Zico's SPC and we still had other positions that we wanted to upgrade and so I needed to make progress fast. Now fortunately for me, there was a champion's bonus objective and since the champion's finals was available, I knew that by playing in that game mode, that would realistically be our best opportunity at getting the resources that we needed and so I would start playing in the qualifiers game mode and just like before, our team was good enough for us to be able to dominate here and while playing games, we were completing objectives and get some players with decent rating and so I decided to make a massive decision. Okay, I'm going to be spending coins so that we can start to complete Zico's SPC because it needs to be complete for the champions finals. Knowing this, I would continue to play these games and because I was determined, I was absolutely dominating within them and after winning a few games, I saw that I had achieved qualification for the champions finals and I decided to call it a day there. 
On this day, I was notified about the road to the final promo, but because I wasn't comfortable with spending coins to complete Zico's SPC, knowing that we needed to still complete Sawa, I knew that I needed to get some insane tradable rewards from the qualifiers. Now we were 7-0, and, and after playing my first two games on this day, and winning both of them, my record stood at 9-0, and, and this meant that if I could win the 10th game that I played, I would get the best possible tradable qualifier reward. I don't care how good this guy's team is, I need to win this game. And with this mentality, I would come out guns blazing, and initially my opponent didn't know what hit them, and we would be capable of crafting up a 3 goal lead. But in big games, we couldn't afford to have these flaws. Now Ramirez, you can't just leave the midfield open. He's through. We need to catch him. No way. Our non-existent midfield would then cause us to concede another goal. And after this, a cheesy corner tactic from our opponent would allow them to equalize the game. And knowing that I needed some more help in the attack, I decided to make some substitutions. If only we had Zico. So on the wing now, we're attacking better. Colin Moani, does he score? Yes, he does. And after getting some help in the attack, we were capable of scoring some more goals. And this would allow us to win the game and earn those insane tradable rewards. Okay, come on, we need to make coins here. And an 85 rated is not a bad start. An 83 rated in the next pack was not a good way of continuing. And while an 85 was not a bad start, it most certainly was a bad ending, especially when you consider the fact that the pack that we opened was worth 100,000 coins. I would then complete the FC Pro upgrade pack, and then in a last ditch effort to make some more coins, I would complete the entire market matchups SPC. But after not making a significant amount of coins from the tradable packs that we got, I was hoping that we could finally get something good from our 84 times 4. Okay, no promo card German center mid from Barca that's going to be Kundagun okay but it is going to be two walkouts and yes our second walkout is going to be an 88 rated Kimmich now we were still far from Zico's next squad but we were now qualified for the champions finals and by playing in this game mode I felt like it was my only opportunity of getting the upgrades that I wanted but because I knew I needed more coins I would tell our informed Theo who was at the left back position because I saw that we had the untradable version of his gold card in our club and it was only a minus one I then also determined that after Zico we could most likely only complete one more card and because because Sawa would be a lot more influential, I decided that for the rest of the challenge, Theo was going to be our permanent left back. Now because we had more coins, I would start to spend it on purchasing high rated players and after completing one more squad, I wouldn't stop there and I would proceed to complete the penultimate squad as well but invested, I would also complete the final squad that I needed to and so in an expensive manner. We have finally completed Zico's SPC, who's going to be a massive boost in the attack but we now have a lot of work to do if we want to get Sawa, who we need to get so that we can make it into Division 1. And so after adding Zico, who made it possible for us to have full chemistry, I would start to play in the champions finals, We immediately I found out that Zico was a lot better than I expected him to be. Now from the get go, the first game was tough, and after our opponent equalized late on, through Zico, we would once again take the lead, before once again late on, our opponent would manage to equalize the game, however we would get one more opportunity before the final whistle. Zico now, over to Mbappe, lovely pass, into Zola, can we score? We actually have an attack now! And after winning a game that I'd usually lose, in my second game, against a tough team, I would go down by two goals early on, before scoring one goal, however then conceding a goal straight away, and once again, this was a game that I'd usually lose. Zola now into Moani. Okay, we got a penalty. And before I take that penalty, Moani was only on because I mistakenly subbed Zico off for him via the suggested substitutions. But for now, let's go score a penalty. Blank. Okay, that's one back. Mbappe on the ball now. His speed is insane. He's so important. And in the very last minute in this game, we will get one more opportunity. Mbappe on the volley? No way, we actually win! I then decided to shuffle the team around to play Zico at the striker position, and then I would also claim and open a decent pack, allowing me to get some fairly high rated players. But knowing that I was still far from completing Sawa, I would continue to play in the Champions Finals, and at this point, we were absolutely flying. And after playing four games, we had won all four. I would then complete an 85 plus player pick, allowing me to get an 86 rated player. But after adding all of my high rated players into Sawa's most expensive squad, I saw that we still needed to spend over 300,000 coins to complete it. And after seeing this, I would go ahead and complete the cheaper squads, but because we did have coins on our account, and she was the final upgrade that I needed to get, before I could make it into Division 1, I decided that I'd start spending coins, and use all of the resources that I had on the account, to get closer to completing Sawa. Okay, so we just completed Sawa's most expensive squad, but we are now completely dry on fodder. The tradable 50k pack that we got would not allow me to make that many coins, but with 6 more fairly pricey squads to complete, I would start to complete as many upgrade packs as I could, and after doing so, already in my first pack, yes, we just got a walkout, but unfortunately, throughout the rest of the packs that I opened, I wouldn't pack another walkout. Now, although we had coins, it wasn't enough to complete Sawa's SPC, and so because I knew that we were going to need to pack higher rated players, and we could get this by completing more of the objectives that were available, I would continue to play in the Champions Finals. Now, although the games would start to become tougher, with Zico's 5 star weak foot, it was clear that the striker position was the perfect one for him, because this man was an absolute goal machine. On top of this, even though we were using the gold version of Theo, because he was only a minus one from the informed card that we had, this card was still competent, and to be honest with you, the only problem 
problem that I had with him was the fact that he had the gold card design. Now fortunately for us, after winning the next 3 games that we played in a row, we had completed another champion's bonus objective and this allowed us to get an evolution item and I knew that the perfect player to use this on was Theo because the only thing that he did was change the player's card design. Now with the solid record at this point, my confidence in our team was high and I would continue to play and it became clear that with the few upgrades that we made, our team had now become a lot more competent at the highest level and so even though we would lose one out of the next 3 games that we played, by the time we were halfway done with the champion's finals, we were still on par to get the best possible reward. Okay so Theo's card has just evolved and now he's exactly the same as he was before but we're also getting an 86 rated objective card as well as an 88 rated player through making progress in the season pass. Now with the highest rated squad that we could build only being an 85 and us only being one win away from winning a decent objective pack, I would bench Zola to add George Best into our team because I felt like he'd be better on the wing before deciding that I wanted to finish our champions finals campaign because the rewards that we'd get from it would allow us to get a significant amount of resources and to complete Sour, we were definitely going to need these. Now in the next game that I played, feeling pressured to get the best rewards that I could, I wouldn't play like myself and I ended up losing to a tough player. I then go into another game and even though I was trying really hard, unfortunately I just seemed to continue conceding and this game was starting to bring out the worst in me. Blanc, I'm blocking the pass. I blocked the pass! There's no way this should have gone through! Now I would still try my best within these games and having better players would allow me to get some hope and after being down by two goals, Zico would single-handedly bring us back in the second game, allowing us to take it to extra time. And after starting to believe again, it was things like this that would cause me to hate this game. Ramirez, good block, but the ball literally just bounces back to him no matter what. He has it through with Smith. No way. And once my opponent got the lead, although I would team press, they would proceed to just time waste and we would ultimately end up losing this game. Now in this negative head space, I would play another game and the further we went in the champions finals, the clearer it became to me that our team needed a little bit more and the more games I seemed to lose. So we literally just lost 3 games in a row and from 9 and 1, we're now 9 and 4. Now in this negative head space, I would still proceed to continue playing in the champions finals because I had to get those rewards if I wanted just a chance at completing Star Wars SPC and so even though playing these games was frustrating, the silver lining for us was the fact that we were definitely now more competent at a higher level and we were capable of winning 3 games in a row. And with 4 games left to play, I would claim the final team of the year bonus objective packs that we could complete and with some insane road to the final cards in packs, it would be nice to pack one of them. Ok we got an inform and it's a portuguese left back and it's going to be Cancelo but he's not in the team of the week so the inform is going to be our second walkout and it's only an 85. Now our inform was a duplicate and one of Sawa's 88 rated squads required a team of the week and like I said this led into the challenge I knew that I was going to need to spend coins to complete Sawa's SPC and so after doing exactly that, ok Sawa's second most expensive squad is now complete. The charitable pack that we got back from it would once again not allow us to make that many coins but in our final 85 times 3 pack, once again we would pack 2 walkouts with the second one being a team of the week and this time the team of the week was 86 rated. Now with us not being far from getting champions finals rewards, I would continue to play in this game mode but after playing FC24 for such a long period of time without really having any breaks, it was clear that I was starting to get burnt out and this would negatively affect me. Because of this, I would lose the first two out of the four games that we had left, meaning that the best rewards that we could get was rank 4 reward. Now that was only if we won the last two games that we played, and so even though I was burnt out, I knew that I didn't have to play that much more FC24, and so I would give it everything that I had and be capable of winning these final two games. Ok so we got rank 4 rewards, and it's not too bad. Now the player picks were too bad for my liking, because the highest rated player that we packed was 85, but thanks to the XP from our rewards, we leveled up in the season pass and were capable of getting an 87 rated player. Now feeling defeated, I would start to open my champions finals rewards and after getting the bare minimum from my first pack and then from a 100k pack seeing that the best player that I packed was only 83 rated, the drive that I had within me to beat the game and make it into the highest division was starting to dwindle and so I needed these packs to turn around. Brazilian centre back in the first pack from Chelsea, wait it's an 84 but it's two walkouts somehow and we got an 86, is there something behind them? No, that's all we packed. Now I was still selling everything and trying to make as many coins as I could because I wanted to give myself the best chance at completing Sawa and therefore being able to complete the game and so we now had one more pack in the store and I was hoping that it could make the difference. We're getting a Dutch striker and it's an inform card. Okay it's a team of the week but it's two walkouts. Oh okay we just packed two team of the week cards. Oh wait it's actually three team of the weeks. What are the odds of that? And so after having some underwhelming rewards, although it didn't seem like a lot, these team of the weeks could have just proven to be our saving grace and I would try to make as many coins as I could from 
selling them. I would then use the mid tier rated players that we had to complete an 85 plus player pick, only getting us an 86 rated player before using more of the mid tier rated players that we had in our club to complete an 84 times 11 upgrade pack. Okay, with 300,000 coins, if we don't get something massive from this, we probably won't be able to complete Sour. Okay, it's the team of the week at least, and it's going to be Mares, I believe. Okay, it's Mares, but the team of the week is going to be the second walkout in this pack. Okay, and it's an 87 rated. Okay, but there are two more walkouts behind them. And so after opening all of my rewards and then crafting as many upgrade packs as I could, I saw that with players in our club, I was capable of completing an 86 rated squad for Sour before having to spend over 200,000 of the coins that we earned to be able to complete another 88 rated squad for Sour. And so at this point, we had now made a significant amount of progress. But the problem for us was that we literally had no more resources left and still three fairly expensive squads to complete. On this day, I was feeling a lot more rejuvenated and also saw that I could play in the qualifiers which would allow me to get terrible rewards. Because of this, I started to play in this game mode and as we've seen earlier on in this challenge, our team is good enough to play here. And so after playing all 10 of our games, because of the fact that we managed to win 9 of them, we were capable of getting rank 2 rewards. Now, unfortunately for us, the rewards were incredibly underwhelming with the best player that we packed only being 85 rated. But with me being in a much better headspace, knowing that there was a slight possibility that we could still complete Sour, I would try to make as many coins as I could from these rewards. I also saw that 83 times 10s were available on this day, and this was massive because we did have team of the week players in our club, and so using our lowest rated team of the week, I would complete the SPC once. So our coins are racking up nicely and we have an 83 times 10, and we're actually getting a promo card, and it's a Chilean goalkeeper from Leon. Oh, it's an 88 rated player, and it's two workouts, and our second workout's 86. That's so good, but unfortunately there's no team of the weeks in the past. Because of this, I was motivated to complete an 83 plus team of the week player pick because with an 87 rated squad being the highest rated squad that we still needed to complete to get Sour, we didn't need to pack the craziest players. And so after getting an 87 rated team of the week from our player pick, although I didn't want to, I would use an 87 rated inform to complete another 83 times 10 and I was now hoping that this risk paid off. Okay, we're not getting a special card this time, but it's a Dutch centre back be from Liverpool. Okay, it's an 86. No, but this time we're only getting one walkout. Well, this is fine if there's a team of the week behind him. Oh, and there is a team of the week as well. And so this allowed us to complete the final 83 times 10 before content refresh. Come on now, we need something good. Okay, this is another team of the week and it's a Portuguese centre mid. Oh, it's Bernardo and that means it's an 88 with another walkout in the pack and the second player is 87 rated. That's massive. Oh, and there's an 87 behind them as well. On top of this, we were also now up to 64,000 coins and we still had two more players that we were waiting on to sell and without even using all of the players that we packed, we could complete another 86 rated squad for Sawa, leaving us with two more squads to complete and both of them being 87 rated. Now with the highest rated squad that we could build being 83, I knew that we still needed to put in a grind and because of the rivals bonus objective that would reward us with packs as we played and won games, I decided to play here hoping that because we now had Zico in our team, we could actually make some progress. Zico into Mbappe, into the back of his net and early on into our first game, there were signs of promise. Zico is so clinical. We would then concede a goal but after Zico got us a penalty in the 91st minute, scoring it would allow us to seal the dub in this game and after winning it, I saw that because of our win streak, if we could win the next game, game, we would make it into Division 2. Okay, let's track his run. No, we're getting punished for actually controlling our defenders. Did we save it? There's no way. But this was the final time that I tried to make it into Division 1, and so I made sure to give it my all. Zico, he's like the only reason I still have hope right now. De Jong would then find Zola, and he would give us even more hope. And after taking the lead, with momentum on my side, I started to feel unstoppable. Zico into Coleman. What a play! Coleman now on the wing, he's been really good for us. Zico's through. Zico, you have to score this now. He does! He's paused the game, is he gonna forfeit? Yes! And that means that we've just made it into Division 2. Now the objectives that we had required us to play a lot of games, and so after making it into Division 2, I would continue to ride our momentum. This would allow me to make even more progress within Division 2, and I was also racking up wins, which could guarantee me rewards later on, and this was important to note. Now, after putting in a massive grind, through the weekly objectives, I was capable of getting a significant amount of XP, and I would also get a few packs from the Division Rivals objective. We also got an 83 times 10 through leveling up in the Season Pass, and also saw that our players had now sold, putting us up to 73,000 coins. Now the Rivals objective packs weren't the greatest, and so because of this, I was hoping that the 83 times 10 would make up for them. Okay, we're not getting a special card, but it's a German cam from Bayern. Yes, it's two workouts, and the first one's Musiala. Okay, our second workout is an 87. Up from an 83, we could now build an 85 rated squad, and I saw that if I was to spend the coins that I had, we could build an 86 rated squad, meaning that to actually complete one of the 87 rated squads, we needed to make 30,000 more coins. Now once content had refreshed, I could and would complete the 83 times 10, and because we had two team of the weeks, I would do it twice, and packing high rated cards would allow us to save our coins for the final squad. We just packed the goats, but we're getting two workouts, 
Yes, and it's 88 rated. And there's a team of the week behind them. But before using that team of the week, I would open our second 83 times 10. Once again, no promo card, but it's going to be a Swiss goalkeeper. And I think that's an 87. Oh, but once again, it's going to be two walkouts. And the second walkout's an 88 rated Bernardo. Now, with Bernardo being a duplicate, I would have to complete the squad if I wanted to save him. But because of all of the high rated players that we had now packed, instead of having to spend over 100,000 coins by just spending 65,000, we have just completed Sawa's penultimate squad with an 88 rated Bernardo to spare. I would then complete the final 83 times 10 that we could before packing an 86 rated walkout from a terrible pack that we got from Sawa's penultimate squad. And so I would send them to our transfer list. Okay, final 83 times 10. It's not going to be a promo card, it's a Danish CDM. No way. Our best card is only an 84. And so with not many coins, I would start scrambling and I would sell the terrible player that we packed. Our highest rated squad was now only 85. And even if I spent the 30,000 coins that I had, we still couldn't even do an 86. And with it being the penultimate day in this challenge, I needed to think fast. Because of this, I would complete the 85 plus player pick after it had refreshed. And the fact that we got an 87 rated player from it was good. I would then rush to complete upgrade packs. And I was having to spend coins on getting rare players to do them. And even then, I was only capable of completing two. And to make things even worse, we wouldn't get anything good from either of the packs. Okay, so realistically, the only way to get higher rated players right now is to complete the rivals bonus objective. And remember when I talked about getting the seven wins being important? Well, this is where that comes into play. You see, because after playing two more games in Division Rivals, because I was capable of winning both of them, I would end up qualifying for Division Rival rewards. But because at this point, my intention was to complete the rivals objective, I would continue to play games. And trust me when I tell you that, man, these games were so tough. But because this was the penultimate day in our challenge, I would continue giving it my all, and I literally would not stop trying, even when it seemed like the odds were against me, and doing so would allow me to continue winning games. Now, at this point, surprisingly, I saw that we were only one game away from Division 1, but because of how close the games were, and the fact that it was the win streak that meant winning one more game would earn us the promotion, I knew that I couldn't afford to lose that one game. Okay, so Rival Rewards comes out in a couple of days, and right now, the only packs that we can get is through the Rival's objective, but I don't think that will give us the value that we need to complete Sawa's card, and so I'm not going to play now for two days, and then when Rival Rewards comes out, that will be the final day. Okay, so our rival rewards is available, and these packs are going to have to be enough. Now, the XP that we got meant that we could get an 84 times 4 pack from the season pass, increasing our odds of being able to complete Sawa. And so, after opening the two two rare gold player packs that we got from our division rival reward, with them having higher value, our final three packs needed to be able to make the difference. We're getting DeMarco in the first pack, and this is just not good enough. Okay, 84 times 4. No special card. Please give me something good, Brazilian goalie. Okay, that's good. It's an 88, but it is only one walkout. And so, in case that isn't enough, I was hoping that the 84 times 10 would give us enough. Final pack now, French. Since afford if that's Benzema that's massive? No. We're only going to get one walkout from our final pack. Now this pack did have a bunch of mid-tier rated players. And so because I knew I could complete an upgrade pack with them, I would complete the team of the week player pick because team of the weeks were required in all of the upgrade packs. And after determining that I wasn't capable of affording the 84 times 11 upgrade pack, I would literally have to spend coins to then be able to complete an 83 times 10 pack. And so this is literally our final pack. And if we don't get high rated players, we're not going to be able to complete Sawa. And by the looks of it, we're getting a Portuguese camp from United. That's an 88? Oh, it's an 88 and it's two walkouts, so the next card's going to be higher rated. Oh, that's Casemiro, and he's 89 rated. I would then head over to Sawa's SPC, and with our previous higher squad being an 86, it was now time to find out if we had enough to complete a final squad. Okay, let's put an 86 over an 85. That's not going to be enough. Let's do 86 and 84. That's not enough either. It's getting close now. And 88 doesn't work. And so it all comes down to Casemiro. Will this be enough? Yes, it is enough. And we can even save an 88 rated player. And so after listening spending two weeks i was finally capable of upgrading all of the positions that i wanted to win this video and now that we had one of the most overpowered midfielders within the game our team is looking absolutely stuck now and because of our win streak and the fact that i woke up so late today it means that we have one opportunity at making it into division one and beating the game and so after spending over four months playing on this account it all came down to this one last game the young into Komen who finds zico we're turning up right now into mbappe this has to be a goal no way! Oh no, he's working it well. No way, Eusebio's through. We have to save this. Oh, we get lucky. De Jong now. Zico's open. Can we walk some space? No way, we got tackled there. And after having two clear cut chances, and our players not scoring on opportunities where they usually would, I started to feel like things were working against me. And at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if my opponent took the lead against me. No? Sawa, what an interception. And in a poetic manner, the upgrades that we grinded for would ignite some hope in me. Sawa, lovely dribbling into Zico. 
That's why we grounded these cards. But I knew the time was an issue. And if we did end up drawing this game, we could risk failing this challenge. Unfortunately, Sawa was helping to lock down our midfield. But it started to seem that our defense couldn't hold out for that much longer. Trent into Mbappe on the wing. Lovely speed. Can we work it in? Coleman into Zico. Can he score? What a finish! And our two-goal lead, combined with the fact that Sawa was so good in the midfield, was causing me to feel comfortable. And in a composed manner, when my opponent attacked, I was capable of defending just fine. And then after winning a corner in the 91st minute, I knew that at this point, a win in this game was basically guaranteed. And hearing that final whistle was music to my ears, because after grinding the game for more than 4 months, and failing time and time again to make it into Division 1, I decided to spend 2 weeks grinding the game as much as I could, to build the best possible team that I could, and have the best possible opportunity at making it into division one and i knew that that final whistle meant that i can't believe it but we have finally made it into division one which means that we finally beat the game now if you guys enjoyed this video you'll enjoy one of these ones so go ahead and click on any of those videos to watch them